Hello again, patrons. Right, here we are then. This is uh, video essay number five. Um, it was called Bananas, Sardines and Sharks. Um, there's loads going on in this video, so uh, I don't want to waste any time. Can't wait to show you all the stuff that's going on. Let's go. Well, at the time of making this, at uh, any rate, this is probably the most sophisticated video essay I've made. Um, I think it's me at my best, starting um, to show, at least briefly anyway, a command of uh, storytelling and pictures. It's uh, something I've been working towards for the year before. So all the videos that you've seen so far sort of feel like they're building up to this one. Uh, that said, it was not easy. Uh, this project, again, something that I thought would be a nice and simple one, uh, actually took about eight weeks um, and a lot of work uh, to make happen. The idea originally was to make a light-hearted piece, believe it or not. Um, after the World War I film, I wanted to contrast that with something less serious, so I thought I'd tell a story about examining an ordinary object in our kitchens that, you know, we don't really give much attention to. And when I started, I had no idea the banana was going to be so interesting or so depressing. So long before. So these first shots come off great. It's just some blue A3 paper on my apartment floor with my various devices on them. Um, I'll come back to this slide later. It's very important. Um, but right now we're starting off very light. Fun music, light script. Um, I'm trying to set up a particular emotion to begin with. So this is a story with an ironic conflict structure. That's the thing that's holding this whole story up. So it's about setting you up to think one thing with the intention of pulling the rug from under your feet later on. In this first act, it's all leading towards the idea, aren't bananas amazing? Isn't capitalism great? Isn't United Fruit clever? Um, precisely because I want those feelings to be reversed before uh, the end of the film. ...to do with this friendly looking sailor and this less friendly looking train operator. In 1899, they teamed up to create... Um, a lot of this footage is actual archive um, from Guatemala that was filmed by United Fruit itself. Secret? Complete control. United Fruit. This sequence of archive uh, from Guatemala, banana plantations and trains, it's repeated three times uh, in the video, and each time it carries different meanings. It's set up here so that you recognize it later on. This is actually all footage from United Fruit itself and the many documentaries that they made, um, most of which are available in the public domain. And man, we loved our cheap bananas. And another big setup. The climax of this act is this cheery, catchy Chiquita banana song. Again, it's all working as a setup for the big reveal at the end of the film. Golden hue, bananas taste the best and are the best for you. Bananas are a solid food that doctors now include in baby's diet. And since they are so good for baby, I think we all should try it. This film actually has a, a relatively late inciting incident. That's the moment when, you know, the story kicks off and it's about a quarter of a way through the story. And again, I've tried my best to make it visual. So this atom bomb goes off. And now we're wondering, what the hell do nuclear weapons have to do with bananas? This is the mystery that I hope is going to drive the, the story forward. It's a difficult balancing act though, because uh, people, people need to wonder what's going on but they also need to know that they're supposed to wonder what's going on. So um, you can be visual, but you have to try and do it in a way that's not going to be too confusing that people get completely lost. Now this shot is hugely important. We've seen the banana slide, and now we see the sardine slide. We know the film is called Bananas, Sardines and Sharks, so we know that there's going to be a bit about sharks. It's the same reason that listicles work. They sort of signal to the audience that we are heading somewhere, so stick with me. Um, I think it, it works really well. Now, in order to pull off this big idea, we have to do a little bit of sleight of hand in the second act. I need you to believe that the Guatemalans are all communists. How do you do it without deceiving people? Well, here, I just present the story solely from the American point of view. And they did believe that Guatemala was full of communists. So it's the truth, but just from one person's point of view. 
It's something that I think is really important in non-fiction storytelling, uh, withholding information and sometimes even deceiving in order to make the truth more powerful. Very few makers of factual content think this way, but I do think it's really effective and a lot of my experiments in video essays are about pushing the boundaries of this idea. These are the actual CIA documents for the operation, which are on the CIA website. Did the Dulles brothers think they could pull it off? They must have done. They called it Operation Success. Here is the and again, another mid-act pace change here, in real contrast to the atmosphere of the scenes before and after. Um, I needed to explain this um, CIA operation without taking up too much screen time. Um, so at least this kind of approach to it gave me the chance to talk fast. ...mercenaries and stash them on the border. Step three, announce on the radio that an army of thousands of well-trained soldiers has just invaded the country, even though they haven't. Step four, send a few light aircraft to strafe the capital city and scare everyone into running away. Step five, keep up the radio broadcasts and announce that your made up army is marching towards the capital. This is all just done in After Effects. And, wait for your man to break. and a nice use of, uh, again, using light here um, to make a photograph uh, say more than it should do. And fled from an army that never even existed. In his place, the CIA installed this guy happy to do as he was told, and definitely not a communist. And here's the big reversal. Um, I do think I probably used the VHS rewind device a little bit too much. I'll have to not use that again. Now this scene coming up took several attempts to get right. So I want the audience to piece the puzzle together themselves using the clues that I've scattered through the story. So we see this five shot sequence again. This is the one we saw in the first act. We also hear the vibraphone sound effect beneath it, a direct repeat of the same moment from act one. And then the Banana Land voice punch, voiceover punches it home, I think, hopefully without being too obvious. And in the first bit of irony, we now view these people, who we thought were communist baddies, as victims. And here I just love how a simple slide with one word on it can advance a story so much, narratively and emotionally, if you set it up the right way. I've become increasingly fascinated actually with the power of repetition in film as a narrative device and in this film you see lots of it. It's all set up and pay off. Castillo Armas did as he was told and gave United Fruit all their land back. And so the bananas kept on coming, as convenient as ever and still cheaper than apples. The operation to remove our bends was... And here is the final payoff and the biggest one emotionally. So it's all leading to this idea that you hear the song again but now with the new information that you've learned since you heard it the first time, it now has a much more negative feeling. There's a particular edit coming up where the, this one here, where the picture aligns with the lyric flecked with brown and with a golden hue. I initially didn't want to do that edit. Uh, it seemed a bit too crass and obvious, um, but I think actually in the end it really hammers home the message. So I'm glad I've changed my mind on that. But I tell you what, I was so sick of this song by the end. And this last scene then, it's all one single shot and kind of brings the story up to the modern day, shows us kind of the, uh, the, the kind of worst consequences of our love of technology. And hopefully provides the moment um, that's really essential in any story to reflect on what it means. Some people thought uh, I should have cut this bit out and just gone straight to the end, but um, I do think it is important to to look back on on the story and for people to understand why they've listened all the way through. And then this has one final payoff, one final surprise at the end, um, that all of the footage we've seen has come from United Fruit. So this film actually took off um, pretty quickly um, on the web. Um, it was also the first of my films to get freebooted. Uh, the website All Star Hip Hop managed to uh, garner about two million views off it before I managed to get them to take it down. Some of the downsides of working in video these days. Um, but I do feel personally that it was a real high point uh, to end the first year of uh, Delve.tv on.